it's just so crazy how it just seems like so many different things continue to line up perfectly for the Baltimore Ravens. Stuff just keeps getting better and better. See, the Baltimore Ravens, they have done enough to where they helped themselves out so much this year. They sitting at 10 and 3 right now. Not only the best record in the AFC, but the one of the best records in the NFL. The tied. It's a tie for the best record in the NFL. I think they tie with the Eagles, with the Cowboys, and with the 49ers, I believe, too. So they, they, they sit in the top of the NFL right now. But the Baltimore Ravens, a lot of those other top records, they belong to NFC teams. AFC is only the Baltimore Ravens. Why? Because the Miami Dolphins heading into this this week. They had first place. First, first place in the AFC was theirs. All they had to do was take care of this bad Titans team. You know, these Miami Dolphins, they take care of bad teams. In fact, they blow bad teams out the water. So we knew they were going to beat the Titans down bad. And they were undefeated uh, in Miami, too. Oh, yeah, this, this is going to be a cakewalk for them. Nope. Nope. And obviously, Tyreek Hill getting hurt, that had a whole lot to do with it. But... As a Ravens fan, like, we know, next man up. I mean, still dealing with next man up even at this point in the season. Even though Ravens are relatively healthier, much healthier than they normally are, it's still a lot of next men up uh, that have been out there. But back to the Miami Dolphins. The Miami Dolphins, all they had to do was take care of this bad Tennessee Titans team, but this Tennessee Titans team took care of them. I remember watching the game and thinking, man, when the, the Tennessee Titans, they were down by two scores, and they had the ball, and they scored a touchdown. Will Levis threw that little no-look to DeAndre Hopkins. It was a nice touchdown pass. And then I saw Mike Vrabel go like this. I'm like, what is he? Why would he go for, for, for what? What's the reason he would go for two? For what? And I heard Dan, Dan Orlovsky on commentary, oh, that's actually a good analytical decision. And I'm thinking, no, that's, that's a terrible decision. And they were like, oh, well, if he gets the two-point conversion, then uh, the next time if they get the ball back, then they just got to kick the extra point and they could be ahead. But if he doesn't get the two-point conversion, then they, they'd have to go for two the next time they got the ball back. And why, so why not just go for two at that point? But anyway, but I, it is what it is. That's why he's a coach and I'm not. I still didn't agree. I'm glad he got it. But I still didn't agree with it, but it ended up working out. And I guess, you know what, when I think about it, uh, it's better that they go for the two-point conversion early than late, before the game is actually on the line. Because if you go for the two-point conversion, the game's on the line, and you don't get it, <laughs> yeah. So I guess I see where the analytics are at with that part. Shout out to you, John Harbaugh. Thanks for teaching us so much of us about analytics. But anyway, um, they got the two-point conversion, and then they got the ball back, and then they went ahead. The go-ahead touchdown by Derrick Henry. Uh, and then when it came to clutch time, uh, Tua was out there, and he threw some passes, and then he got sacked on that last play. And, boy, I was jumping for joy. I know a lot of y'all were, too. Because that gave the Baltimore Ravens sole possession, not a tie, not a two-way tie, not a three-way. No, 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 no. That gave them sole possession of first place in the AFC. Now, I know there's some Ravens fans that do not want first place in the AFC they don't want that number one seed and, and I get it it's been for several different reasons but this is a beautiful thing this is a beautiful thing so much has just fallen in line for the Baltimore Ravens I remember if we go back a couple of weeks it was Chiefs and Ravens with the same record and if Chiefs would have won out and Baltimore Ravens won out as well then Chiefs would be the number one seed so the Baltimore Ravens did not control their own destiny but now they control it it's all theirs Whatever they do, that, that's what's going to happen, good or bad. Hopefully, great. So we'll see how it goes. I, I'm still expecting great things from the Baltimore Ravens. This team, they have the guys to do it. This is an extremely special team, extremely special team. Something that Lamar Jackson said uh, a couple of days ago, it, it really stuck out to me because I'm like, oh, man, like he, he really understands what this is, man. He really does. He said um, I believe our team is locked in because we know what is ahead of us. We know what got us here. Now, this part right here. He's when he said, we can only have this team once. And I believe we know what we're chasing. That may be insignificant to some of y'all, but to me, that was extremely significant. Reason being because the part where he said, we can only have this team once. That's so true. They've had some nice teams in the past. I think 2021 for sure that team was built very nicely but injuries took over now this year the team was built 
very nicely. And there have been a, a good amount of injuries and some significant injuries as well. But because of the way that this team was built, because of the depth of this team, they were able to and are able to withstand the injuries that they've had occur. Uh, guys like Mark Andrews, um, who is out for a while at least, Isaiah Likely certainly been stepping up over these past couple of weeks. Uh, guys like Tyus Bowser, David Ajabo, uh, Kyle Vinoy, and Jadavian Clowney, they have really, really uh, been holding it down. Guys like J.K. Dobbins, uh, Gus Edwards, Justice Hill, and more recently, Keith Mitchell, uh, they've been holding down the fort. Um, and then, I mean, the, the, the list continues, but the point is that these Baltimore Ravens, They've been finding a way to get the job done. And as long as they continue to look for ways and find ways to get the job done, then hey, they know what awaits them at the end of this year. It's, and it's the only thing that can happen. Like this, like this season, if the Baltimore Ravens finish with anything, anything less than a Super Bowl, I think it, it would. No, no, no. I take that back. I don't think it would be crushing. It, it it would be crushing because this team is extremely special. And we've been saying that even before the game against the Rams a couple days ago, but before the bye week, before the Chargers went, but before like, like this, from jump, from jump, before the season even started, we, we talked about it so many times. I mean, you can go back to the videos and check. We said the only thing, in my opinion, that could stand in the way of the Baltimore Ravens was health that's it well then and coaching too <laughs> but anyway uh but, but yeah health that was the biggest thing in my opinion that could get in the way of the baltimore ravens and the ultimate goal and again they have lost some guys along the way but they are a pretty healthy overall team and they have they still have so many quality guys on the team and it's like with speaking of health like, we just got that great news yesterday on Kyle Hamilton, um, him having the, the, the grade one MCL sprain. Harbaugh talked about how he, he may be able to play this week. Uh, so we'll see what happens with that. But, again, I, I, I wouldn't play him this week. Like I said earlier, I would uh, play him next week. Oh, well, if he can. If he's good to go next week, I will play him next week. Now, my guy Skeptical, he made a really good point, a really interesting point, too. He said he would hold Kyle Hamilton out until the playoffs. And when I saw that, I was like, mm, I don't like it. I get it, and I understand your reasoning. I don't like it, but I, I get it. Because uh, he talked about how like that, that would allow Kyle Hamilton to really be 100%. That's when we need him the most, like the most, the most, because, again, that, that's playoff time. Um, and, again, that would allow him to heal up uh, over these next four weeks for sure. Um, so we'll see. We'll see again. Uh, starting on Wednesday when they return to practice, we'll see if Kyle Hamilton practices or not, and then we'll just go from there. Um, now, speaking of Baltimore Ravens and health, Pepe Williams. Pepe Williams, who has been out the whole season, um, he is eligible to return. I mean, his 21-day window has started uh, 20 days ago, um, and today – uh, a decision has to be made. And Harbaugh did say, like, yeah, we expect to add him to the roster. I just got to talk to Eric Acosta about the specifics on it and whatnot. Um, now, uh, Jeff Zrebeck did mention that with Mark Andrews on injury reserve, um, the Ravens do have an open roster spot. So that I did not realize that they got a roster spot just sitting there because with Pepe Williams being added to the roster, I was thinking, all right, I wonder um, – Who's who they gonna put on IR? Who they gonna take off the roster in order to make a spot for him? But see, they don't even have to do that because there's that spot due to unfortunately Mark Andrews' injury. Uh, and Jeff Sweepick also made another good point. He talked about how Kyle Hamilton, with Kyle Hamilton being out for however long he's out for, hopefully it's not for too long, but we'll see. But they're gonna need somebody to hold it down in the slot. And he said that could be a role for Pepe. Williams. Now, um, I know Arthur Millett, uh, he can play some slot. It's not always the prettiest and whatnot. Because, again, we had Kyle Hamilton playing there. And when you go from Kyle Hamilton to really a lot of guys after him, it's not going to be as pretty. Kyle Hamilton, 
he he spoils us like he spoils us as a player you know what's interesting and and i really really appreciated this i mean i i wish she wouldn't have gotten or had to see that but she did because my wife she was watching the game she's watching the ravens game and she saw when kyle hamilton got hurt and she mentioned to me after the game she was like man the defense when kyle hamilton got hurt the defense they were playing really bad they were doing a really bad job and it's like oh like it, it it hurts to hear that from your wife about your team it's true she was speaking nothing but facts but it hurt to hear that. Like, if you hear that from one of your boys, or something, oh, yeah, that's, that's, but when you hear from your wife, your wife, and she has a, a basic understanding and even some detailed understanding and knowledge of football, but she's just a very casual fan. But for her to say that, I said, ooh, yeah, oh, yeah, it was, it was rough. It was rough. Because, again, the numbers that uh, Film Study Ravens brought out, with Kyle Hamilton on the field, Ravens defense against the Rams, 4.1 yards per play. 4.1 yards per play. Kyle Hamilton off the field, 7.7 .7 yards per play that they gave up. So, again, it, it almost doubled. The, 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 the yards per play almost doubled that they gave up with Kyle Hamilton off the field. So, we'll see how they make their adjustments uh, with him gone. But that will be very important for the Baltimore Ravens to make adjustments because – and, and, and it's going to happen. Not not every single defensive defense's game is going to be like we want it to be. It's not going to be like we, we we usually see them. When they locking it down, they shutting it down, they ain't giving up hardly no points. We wish every game could be like that. We really do. That would be beautiful. Most games are like that, but not every one. So it's going to be some, sometimes with the defense, they got to rely on the offense a bit more. That was one of those games. And then there are going to be some games where the offense got to rely on the defense a bit more. Like the Chargers game. And, then, and there were some other ones too. So, either way, um, there are also going to be some games where the offense and defense, they're going to be doing their thing. But we may need a little boost from special teams. So, shout out to Tyler and Wallace, our new official. Well, not officially official, but I mean, after that, what do you put him on a bench after that? Especially because it's significant because Harbaugh talked about how Devin Duvernay maybe out a week or so with a back injury. So that, unfortunately, that makes it easier for coaches to make a decision. When a player gets hurt, and like they could be thinking in the back of their heads, like, oh man, this player should be starting. He should be the one out there. But sometimes they just need a little wiggle room. They just need a little, a little, a little segue from one player to the next on how the player that they really feel should be out there can be out there. But an injury, injuries are unfortunate, but they do provide opportunities. Remember, if I take you back to Lamar Jackson's rookie year, 2018, and Joe Flacco, they would keep throwing Lamar out there for all these different type of plays, and they were showing us, like, oh, we, we really want Lamar Jackson to be on the field. That's what the Baltimore Ravens were showing us. We want him to be on the field. There will be times when Joe Flacco would even be in the rhythm in offense, and they would take him up, hey, Lamar, get out there. Go do something. And then... Flacco got hurt. He got hit by Stephon Tuitt and injured his hip. And Ravens was like, oh, the injury sucks. That's, that's terrible, but this is our chance. Now we can, okay, Lamar, you up. And we could talk about that with plenty of other Baltimore Ravens, people in the NFL. We, we know how it goes. Injuries are the worst part about football. But they have provided so many people over the years opportunities. And it's all about making the most of it when you're out there. And that's what this Baltimore Ravens team has been doing. They've certainly been making the most of it because, they, again, there, there's been a lot of injuries over the course of this year alone. Um, but the guys that have been there, they have stepped up and they have shown out. So now Baltimore Ravens, things just, again, they keep getting better and better. Things just keep lining up for the Baltimore Ravens. It's looking real good. But now it's all about how you finish.